Hi, welcome back to part two of episode three. My name is Moksha, and um, we're working on a painting that we started in the last episode. It's, uh, this is the, uh, what you see here is the underpainting stage. Um, last episode I blocked in the, I uh, sketched in the crow and some basic design elements in the painting so that I could work out my composition. Um, I have uh, a basic sort of sense of the lighting and the, the uh, color palette or tone of the painting at this, at this stage. So in this uh, episode now we're going to start uh, adding a lot of detail to the foreground and to the crow. We're going to further develop our lighting and uh, we're going to start to get a lot of depth in the painting. Right now this is all just flat, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but we're going to get a sense of atmosphere now in this stage. We have a moon, uh, a full moon, and then maybe there's some fog, and we'll, we'll get a better, uh, by the end of this session, we're going to get a good, solid uh, grasp on what this painting looks like. Um, so, let's uh, get started. Okay, so here we go. Um, day two. I'm going to start adding a lot more detail here in my foreground and in this branch. Uh, I want to just keep adding my values up and really establish the space, especially in this dead area up here. So, let's begin. Um, I've mixed up, I'm using my um, angled shader brush again. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice for drawing, I think, and it's also because it's, it's got the broad edge, I can also shade a little bit with it. You'll see as I work what I mean by that. Anyway, I've mixed up some paint gray with a little um, phthalo green and to sort of deaden the brightness of it I, I added just a dab of cadmium orange. Let's see how that looks. I'm, it may not be right. Let's see. I know it's hard for you to tell exactly what color this is, but I like it. It's a little too green in places, so I'm going to use some opposite red to make it look more black. So I have some blades of grass here or something. One of the things that's really good to practice doing is to uh, take full advantage of the shape of your brush. Um, so here I've got a slightly larger uh, angled chisel brush and one of the benefits of this shape, um, I like it for foliage because I can have these uh, sharp sharp points at the front of the of the leaf and then as you uh, as you make a stroke you can kind of twist it a little bit and the, it'll make the leaf, leaf wider or perhaps you could use a little more pressure to change the shape and so take any brush that you want to uh, that you already like or that you want to explore more and I want you to really play with um, all the different shapes you can get out of the brush um, without using a lot of extra work. Um, so take advantage, what I'm trying to say is take advantage of the shape of the brush. There's a place for a round brush, there's a place for a chisel brush, and the best way to figure out what that place is, is to use the brush. Use it a lot, don't be afraid to just experiment and try different things. See what works best. See what the strength of that brush is. What's the what's the main benefit of using that shape of brush? And you'll find that in your arsenal of brushes, in your toolbox, that 
um, as you start to learn your tools better, you'll you'll reach for the right tool for a certain job, and it'll end up saving you a lot of time. Plus, it's uh, you're going to get better results. You're going to have a better better looking painting, a more expressive painterly painting. Um, if that makes any sense. So just play around. That's all I'm saying with your brushes. At this stage, I'm especially here in the, in the foreground, I'm still just playing with basic shape and texture. I'm not trying to be a little, I'm not trying to be too literal about the shapes I'm making. A lot of these shapes are suggestive, suggestive of foliage or mosses or twigs, um, but it's still very abstract and loose. So you can see I'm not really, I don't know if you're, if the camera's close enough really, but you can see I'm not really drawing these shapes. Uh, I'm not doing an outline and filling it in. I'm, I'm relying on the shape of my chisel brush here. Uh, this is like a size one half inch. I'm relying on the shape of it to, to sort of form the leaves and as few strokes as possible. That was one stroke. And I've got uh, an interesting shape that feels like it has dimension and is bent in a way that a real leaf is, would be curved. And I haven't drawn that, I've just painted it with one stroke. So to, as I'm painting, there's a branch behind this, this branch, and so the thing, the branch in front is going to be a lot darker and sharper edges because it's closer to me. This, brush, this branch back here I'm doing uh, with very little paint on the brush, uh, it's very just, it's very soft. You're, you're seeing this branch through more atmosphere, so this, if this is a foggy night, then this branch is almost just a silhouette. There's not a lot of detail drawn in. Forget to take a step back pretty often and look at your painting from a distance. You'll uh, be able to see the composition and errors easier from a distance. Sometimes we just we get too close to the work and we get focused in on a little tiny area and we're loving every, every minute of the detail in that area and just obsessing over it and then you take a step back or two and it's completely wrong and you gotta do it over paint it out and do it over
if you're wondering, I'm painting all of this just out of my head, I'm not using photo reference. Um, I have painted a lot of foliage, and I have used reference in the past sometimes. Um, so do whatever is comfortable for you. But right now, I'm just mostly I'm just making stuff up. I don't even know specifically what any of this is. Fern-like, perhaps. I don't know. If you don't like the color, there's something you've done. With acrylic paint it dries very quickly, but you have a few moments, sometimes only split second, to uh, maybe grab a spray bottle, spray it, and wipe some of it off. I'm trying to now work on my atmosphere behind the crow. I'm deciding um, what kind of night is it. How much fog do I have? What's the tone of the light? Is it going to be a slightly purple cast back here? Or what? And I think I want kind of a purpley crow. And so at this stage I'm going to I'm going to bring more of that purple tone in to the painting, I think. I kind of like that. So I'm using I'm using like a phthalo turquoise in the shadowy areas to enrich them. I want them darker, but I don't want them just black. And then where I have more atmosphere in the back, I'm adding more purple. And I want it very thin. I want thin washes, so I'm using my spray bottle. But I may have gotten it a little too thin, because it's running.
Okay, so I've established a lot more of the the darker elements, a lot of uh, silhouettes and dark shapes in the foreground. I'm starting to get more depth, uh, starting to get a suggestion of clouds here, this mist and the full moon. Uh, however, I've gone a little too far in places, um, and I want to go back in with a layer of white and define some shapes and brighten things out a little bit. Um, so I think I'll probably use um, a little zinc white because it's more transparent. And I'll start to then define some of these shapes and push some things back a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, well, that's about all I have time for now. Um, not completely thrilled with where it's gone, but you get the idea. Um, starting to get a lot more depth, a lot more depth and definition, a lot more contrast, um, more atmosphere. It's still very, very loose, and I think next session I'll start to really bring out a lot of the detail in the crow. Um, once I can establish the lighting and make my subject look more finished, I think the environment will start to fall into place. So, that's that. Uh, let me try to give you a closer look at this. It's kind of hard to see with the glare. So, you get the idea. And that's that for the second part of episode three of Painting with Moksha. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.